Hello guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about two pairs going into next week. Ryan's going to be talking about USD CAD and then I'm going to be talking about Euro USD. So make sure you leave a like and a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any more videos. So let's get straight into it. Guys, starting off with USD CAD on the weekly chart, uh, just looking at market structure and what the price is doing. So if I draw your attention to the top here, we can see that price made this double top. Uh, 2016 was one touch, and then 2020 uh, in March uh, was the other touch. We see we had a nice double uh, top in this market. And then from there, we've been in this bearish trend. We see these bearish and golfing candles, and we've just been free falling ever since. Uh, and what this looks like, this looks like a falling wedge where we're still in this bearish market structure falling down. We can see uh, multiple touches on uh, this trend line and multiple touches on this trend line. If we draw your attention to here, we can see that the weekly uh, left these wicks. Uh, you see here a pin bar uh, rejecting this trend line here. So bring that into next week. We can potentially expect some sort of wick back up and then continue down. Uh, so jumping on the smaller time frames that look a lot more clearer. Uh, so yeah, let's go straight into it. So if we jump on the daily daily chart, what can we see? We can see this area of consolidation here. We can see where we've just been stuck within this area. And then all of a sudden we had this uh, bearish and golfing candle closing all below these body candles here. Uh, so this is signifying that we are looking for a bearish reversal at this trend line. So jump on the four hour. What can we see right now? This is where we can start drawing in technicals on the smaller time frames. Uh, so what can we see? We can see uh, here we had a, a fake trend line here where it's been respected coming back up to this trend line. And as you can see, we broke it, retested it once, uh, tracked in retail traders getting in there on that evening star. And then boom, what did we do? We came back up and retested it again. And now we're starting to look like we're getting that push to the downside. We're drawing an area of support and resistance. It looks like this area across here is uh, the significant area. Had multiple rejections here, here. And then uh, use that support here once again. And now what it looks like we're doing, it looks like we're finally breaking away from this area. Boom. So yeah, that's everything. Very, very clear on the four hour. So now uh, what we're waiting for. Now what we're waiting for is the one hour to give us an extra more push away from this area. So as you can see, we've still got some wikis around here. So what we would like to see is price to potentially fall even further. Once we get that further continuation to the downside, we could then start predicting some sort of correction back up to retest this area of significance. As you can see across here, it's used as support uh, very nicely. So then we'll use that as resistance. So once we get this correction back up to here, we'll then look for our entry signal to then look for further continuation to the downside. Now you probably ask, well, where would you target? Well, would you target the last area of support and resistance, which looks like it was this area down here. So if I'm drawing a zone across here it looks like this area down here would be a nice target um as you can see boom further continuation see that correction and then look for that further continuation to the downside uh to this area support and then if this area breaks we then look for a break and retest once again down here targeting to 90 ray of these lows down here now this is the sell bias but as you can see price can still turn bullish from this area support so if we jump on the higher time frames if price decides to uh, not respect that and then actually move uh, bullish from here, then it will be a break above this whole structure, a pull back into this area, then look for that continuation if we do want to go uh, bullish from here. So this is usually CAD broken down. Sell bias, if you can see a further continuation, a correction back up on the retest, and then look for that further continuation. If we do, if we do respect this area and we do turn bullish, then we have to wait for that whole break of structure uh, wait for the retest and look for that continuation. So yeah, this is USD CAD. Okay, guys. So I'm going to be talking about Euro USD. Um, starting on the daily time frame of this one, we can look at market structure and we can see that we are uptrending. So um, on the higher time frames, we can say that buyers are in control. Um, just looking at the market structure, you can see here we do have a double bottom, and then we saw a big impulsive move to the upside. So we can just um, further emphasize that buyers are in control of the market. Um, looking at structure, looking at um, areas of previous resistance and support, we can see that where price actually broke out of was this level of sensitivity in the market, where price was using it as resistance. And then all of a sudden, you can see we had this big 
bullish engulfing candle on a daily time frame and then price just continues the upside. However, over the past couple of weeks, we have just been pulling back into this level. And um, it's very significant, this level, because if I draw my Fibonacci from swing low to swing high, drag it across, you can see that this level in the market um, does line up with the 50% Fib. And you can see that we pulled back, uh, touched this level, and then we saw uh, a big bullish engulfing off this. So we can say that clearly buyers have stepped in from this level because all of a sudden we had a massive bearish engulfing candle into this level where some people might be selling from this. They're thinking big bearish engulfing candles, so they sell. But you can see the significance of this level because all that was doing was just grabbing the interest from buyers who were waiting for price to get to this level. And then we saw a big bullish engulfing candle. If I just show you the weekly time frame, you can see what this is looked like on the weekly time frame. A massive wick was left uh, to the downside from last week. So you can see that how you can see how buyers stepped into the market there. Um, you can also see why basically why price didn't um, just take off from this level. You can see we have this level of support where price was using it. Um, buyers stepping in here. However, why didn't price continue to the upside here? Uh, and why did we come down? Well, you can see the reason being is because this is a level in the market um, that's a lot stronger than this level here. So all the buying orders in the market were clearly at this level. Um, so that's the reason why we didn't go up from here. We, had, we, had, we needed to have that push down. Uh, the market was clearly heading here and now we can see that we're potentially turning bullish again. So let's drop it down to a time frame. Let's look at the one hour. So on this one hour time frame, you can see price was clearly downtrending into this level. If I draw in a trend line, this has now been broken. If I draw it from here, drag it down. You can see that ever since we touched this level down here, we made a big bullish impulse to the upside. So uh, buyers have clearly stepped into the market here, broken the trend line. And what are we now looking for? Well, we've come back to this, um, this significant level in the market here. If I jump up to the four hour, we have come back to this level in the market this level of support, support, we could now potentially use it again as resistance. And we can use this to predict a potential um, inverse head and shoulders. If I just show you what we're gonna be looking for is something like this, with this side over here being the left shoulder and this side over here being the right shoulder and then down here, this level being the head. So that's what we could expect to happen, this being an inverse head and shoulders pattern. So what we're basically anticipating is for price to pull back into this region for then a poten potential buyers to step into the market, drive the price higher, and then we'll look for a potential retest of the inverse um, head and shoulders of the neckline to then look to take buy positions like this. However, as we're anticipating for price to pull back, we could potentially catch a position on this, uh, on the lower time frame, potentially catch, um, something like this where we see a clear break in structure like that we may be able to catch a smaller time frame position on the way down where we catch that kind of movement but that's only if it's clear only if we get that clear shift in structure uh, shift in structure and um, however the main position we're going to be looking for is potential buyers at the right shoulder and then wait waiting for the impulse away through the neckline to then continue with the, the catching buyers again on the retest of the neckline targeting any higher positions, potentially the where the start of this downtrend ended, uh, started. But of course, on the on the higher time frames, we're expecting this to go a lot higher. So yeah, this is Euro USD broken down. What we're looking at is um, short term sales down to the, the right shoulder to then potentially take um, a longer swing trade by uh, breaking through the neckline and then continuing with our buy positions along the way. So yeah, that's Euro USD broken down for the week ahead. Thanks guys for watching. Really hope you took something away from it. If you want to receive daily trading setups like we just spoke about, um, we do provide this in our premium group plus a lot more. All the links will be in the description below. So go check them out. Uh, and yeah, hope everyone smashes this trading week.